Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about diagnosis of multiple myeloma but before we get to diagnosis, let's have a brief understanding of what myeloma really is. It is the malignant proliferation of plasma cells. That is unnecessary, uncontrolled growth. Plasma cells come from your B lymphocytes and B lymphocytes are essential for the production of antibodies. Antibodies are essentially proteins which are the defense mechanism of your body. In your antibodies, you have your heavy chain and your light chain. Let's remember the light chains because they are important for the diagnosis later on. In myeloma, there is abundant production of one type of abnormal immunoglobulin causing paraproteinemia. Let's get to clinical features. In clinical features, the most common seen in more than 70% of patients is bone pain. Bone pain caused due to bone fragility, weakness, Fractures are also commonly seen in your vertebrae, your ribs. This is caused due to resorption of calcium from the bone into the blood. This causing hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia can be detected in the form of headache, lethargy, confusion. The increased amount of abnormal protein content also causes hyperviscosity. Can be seen in the form of headache, confusion, difficulty in walking. Then let's talk about renal failure. Renal failure is caused due to hypercalcemia as well as paraproteinemia. As that is due to the light change. Seen in more than 25% of patients presenting with myeloma. Lastly, we have our lab diagnosis. That is all the routine investigations starting with your CBC. Anemia is most commonly seen that is of normocytic, normochromic kind. That is the size and shape of your red blood cell does not decrease, that does not change, but the quantity is decreasing. This is because the marrow cells are replaced by the expanding tumor cells. Similarly, there will be a decrease in the count of platelet and white blood cells as well. Decrease in platelet count causes increase in clotting time. And then your erythrocyte sedimentation rate caused by clumping of RBC is also increasing as well as, a, as well as your lactate dehydrogenase. In your serum metabolic panel, your serum calcium, urea, creatinine, nitrogen are also increasing. Then you do something known as beta 2 microglobulin. This is a powerful indicator of your prognosis, that is your chances of survival. In serum albumin, there is hypoalbuminia seen, again an indicator for the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Lastly, we have a serum protein electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is detection of light chains. The particles are separated according to their size, shape, weight and charge. Light chains are detected with the help of something called M bands on them. You have your urine test. Urine test, you have to detect the light chain proteins, in this case called the Ben Jones proteins. You can do it by urine electrophoresis or by the 24 hour urine test. Then you have something called as fat pad aspirate in which the tumor cells are detected from the abdominal fat. Then you have your genetic testing, cytogenetic testing, fluorescence in situ hybridization, minimal residual disease that is detection of remaining cancer cells. All of this is important to observe the genetic damage resulting in the hematological disorders, in this case multiple myeloma. Lastly, you have your MRIs. In your MRIs, your X-rays, you see bony cavities, you see bony lesions which indicate bone fragility again because of multiple myeloma. This is it for me everybody. I hope this gave you a better understanding of the diagnosis as well as the disease helping you and your loved ones for a better chance of prognosis. Thank you.